I think the journey is very important. Oftentimes we focus on the destination, but as I, as I get a little bit older here and then I look kind of the gray hairs and things that are happening, I say, you know what? Enjoy the journey. Enjoy getting up day to day and the interactions that you have, because I think those are so very important. So that journey, ha- have a goal in mind, have a destination, but be mindful of that, that, the journey piece. I think it's important. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to When the Moment Chooses You. I am your host, Coach Charmaine, and I am extremely honored today to have Mark Gaines with me. And let me tell you a little bit about Mark that, I mean, from what I can see, I've been on a few conversations and a few calls with him and the passion in his heart for equity, inclusion, diversity, and just his story was so profound that I thought he would be a great add to this month on Black History uh, Month. So Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm certainly glad to be here today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to have you. So let's Jump right in, Marty. The reason why I wanted to do this podcast is because I remember as a middle schooler and they taught us Black history, but it really, they didn't really do it justice. I found out so much more beyond my school years. So that's why I kind of wanted to highlight Black History Month because Mm -hmm. I'm proud to be Black. I'm proud to have made all of the strides that I have. So I just thought other people would be blessed by hearing the wonderful stories from Uh, the guests that I've had, because you are truly a trailblazer that I believe. (laughs) Thank you. And so let me start with the first thing. Um, Let me start with the first question. So the first question, after you tell us about yourself, well, let's pause for a minute. Mark, tell us who you really are. Oh, man, Mark Gaines. Uh, Well, I'm an African-American male uh, in my 50s. I grew up in in Alabama, so I have very southern roots. I was actually born in Newark, New Jersey, but uh, did some transplanting and moving around. My family moved around, but both sides of my family are from the from the south. Um, As I said before, grew up in Birmingham, which had a rich rich history of uh, culture. Uh, both my parents went to historically HBCUs. Um, I call us the Black Waltons, if you can remember that show in the in the seventies. Um, <laughs> my my dad, yes. yeah, my dad's family lived in Birmingham. My mother's family actually uh, had farm. I had a farm down on the Georgia Florida line. So. Grew up with these rich mixture of cultures. On one side, it was education. On the other side, it was just farming and family. So, um, you know, grew up in that spirit, uh, a kid of the 70s, but also just uh, had family members that were involved in the civil rights movement. And that's been a part of my history and my culture. And I can always remember as a kid, uh, we would go down to the parades uh, for um the HBCUs, and that was such a thrill. So just grew up with these uh, family members that who are very resilient and very proud of their culture and their heritage. A um, little bit about my background there. Uh, spent three years in Japan, uh, interested in diversity. So I had an opportunity to teach English in Japan for three years. And uh, I've been... Oh, wow. Yeah, it was a terrific opportunity. Uh, got a chance to just travel and see the world. And then uh, for the last... Um, uh, 20 over 20 years I've been involved in uh, diversity work in San Francisco. Wow, that's wonderful. What a rich heritage you have. Um, what I'd like to do, Mark, is I'd like for you to share with us a story that you think would bring awareness as a um, African American or black male. Can you give us a story that could kind of oh. unpack something about Black history? Yes. Well, I, I think it's so important for me to know about my culture and my history. I come from a family of educators, from teachers. So when I was young, instead of getting a lot of the co- uh, toys and cars and things like that, I got books. Mm. 
And I got books about my history, mm. my background, my culture. Had an opportunity to go to just different cultural events in the community and be exposed that way. Um, I think an, a unique story that, that, that I relate to is uh, just being involved or my family being involved in the civil rights movement. I, I actually had an uncle and an aunt who were in the um, bombing uh, in 1963 oh. in Birmingham. So that, oh, wow. Yeah. So that re- I think that really impacted my life because uh, as a small kid, I think growing up, we didn't talk about that within the family. You know, and when we tried to just sort of when I mm-hmm. as a young kid tried to bring it up, I could see the sort of the pain and the anguish. And I just thought, you know, yeah. why would that occur? What happened? And then as I got older, um, I began to learn more about it. But these were members of my family. Again, my uncle and my aunt. And they were they were they were teachers, they were educated, they were in the community. They were very supportive. So um, I think for me, that stood out as when people hear about those incidences and that history, for me, it's part of my family. So I think that really inspired me to do the work that I do today around bringing people together from different cultures and different backgrounds. And if we sit down and break bread and and have that conversation and and bring our best selves to to our environments and um, what we can learn from one another. Yeah, well, that's really interesting. I'm curious, Mark, um, do you know why um, why that was like a hush, hush topic? Like, why didn't they just openly talk about it? Yeah, because I think it was so painful. I think that it was so painful mm-hmm. for them to really talk about. And I think that uh, they really wanted to shield me from that. They wanted to shield me from sort of the pain and the hurt and what they had experienced. And again, um, uh, you know, now when I look back, I could understand that. But as a kid, you're inquisitive and you sort of hear these stories, yes. whispers, and you want to learn, learn or know about it. So you ask. Um, so, yes. So, so I think that was a, I think that was a, a piece of it. And I think sort of with those. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I call it that 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 Southern tradition. Oftentimes, we don't want to talk about the negative, and what we want to talk about is resilience yes. and how we've overcome and what to strive for and to be as positive as possible. So, yeah, those are some of the learnings. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow, that's awesome. So, Mark, have you personally experienced any discrimination or racism in your upbringing? Uh, well, I think that any stories you can share with us in that way. Yeah, I think it would be um, expectation of others. So I can specifically remember or just growing up oftentimes with my parents, uh, you know, encouraging me to put my best foot forward and, you know, letting me know mm-hmm. that sometimes that people are going to judge me by the, as they say that, you know, um, my the color of my skin versus the content of my character. So I think I was really taught right. to be hardworking, to be resilient, to be very respectful, uh, but know that from a societal view, others would just have possibly have a negative uh, impression of me because you know I'm African American or I'm I'm, I'm a male or, or or from the South or things like that. So that that stands out for me. Um, I don't think that there was, you know, one, you know, particular incident that I can can draw from from that parallel. But I think it was just that um, that knowledge and that awareness that I needed to put my best foot forward and I needed to, you know, bring everything to my work environment, be as friendly as possible, be as knowledgeable, successful, work hard, roll up my sleeves and. um uh, yeah, yes. have that perspective. I remember, Mark, you had mentioned something about when you were a child and you were, I think you were on a sports team or something like that. Do you remember that story you shared? I can't remember where you shared it, but I thought it was so awesome to see your character in in it. 
Was it the sports team? I know that I was in band, so maybe it was a band story. I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, maybe that's what it was. That that is what it was. You were in band, and I think you were. Can, can you remember that story? Can yes, you tell yes, me a little bit more about that story when you were in the band? Oh yeah. So um, had an you know. So growing up in high school, I was um, in the band and went to uh, you know a very good high school. Really, really loved my high school. But my freshman year. I joined the band. I was the only African American in a band of maybe, I would say maybe 150 people. So I think that, you know, growing up, uh, adjusting from junior high to high school is, is tough enough for any, anyone. But I think just adding right. to that, um, making that adjustment, I was suddenly in a situation where I was the only african-american kid and you know i sat down with my parents and 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 said you know talked about it and they said well if you want to do that do it we're going to be behind you 100 percent but being the only african-american person in the room don't let that ever stop you from achieving your goals or traveling or yes. just moving forward in life. And that was a very good experience for me. Uh, I had to, had to adjust, you know, uh, with the, with the kids and, and with, with the band director. And again, they were very supportive, but, um, Again, I think just growing off oftentimes for uh, folks of color, BIPOC, you know, sort of being the only representative in there or being that only person, you know, you sort of walk in the room and you look around and you say, who are others around me that can relate to me and can give me support and guidance? So uh, that story, um, you know, I think stood out to me or stands out to me. Um, a- as the band grew, yeah. uh, there were more pe- more kids that came in and years after. So, uh, you know, my, my sophomore year, junior year, senior year, you know, there, there were a handful. I would say maybe 10 or 12, but I can just remember a little bit feeling isolated sort of that first year. Um, I was the diversity, as I say. So whenever they talked about... Um, uh, us being, you know, integrated and this was in the eighties and they said, we're all, oh, we're very diverse. I always look back. I was in every band picture that they had. I was just front and center there. <laughs> I was the diversity. You know, I was the diversity. So yes, you were. <laughs> th- there were, there were some definite perks <laughs> to that. And, you yeah. know, whenever we would meet yeah. other band members or other folks. I knew that I would always sort of be there with my trumpet going, yes, how you doing? Welcome. Welcome to, to Homewood High School. So it, it was a, a good learning experience for me, and it really helped me as I move forward. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I really love that story. Um, so, uh, Mark, I'd love for you to share with the audience um, perhaps some things that allies can do to help support. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think I think being an ally is important because uh, for me it is it is being very inquisitive. It is bringing our full selves to our friends, our work, our society. So an allyship is wanting to learn about other cultures, other people, other backgrounds. Um, I want to be an ally for others. I want others to be an ally for me. Um, and I think with yes. that, uh, talking to people, as I say, let's break bread together. Let's just not be in the room together or have lunch, but let's talk. Uh, also asking questions that, you know, maybe for, you know, society, you think that you're, you're not supposed to ask that question or answer that question. But to really have those side conversations, I think, are really important because you, you get to know people and you get to 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 share yourself and your culture. And I think mistakes are going to happen sometimes. I think um, with 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 people that are close to us, there are going to be miscommunications that are occur. But that's part of the learning process for us as we as we grow and learn. Yes. Uh, so uh, I think that that allyship is important. Uh, talking with one another, uh, you know, being friends. 
opening ourselves up to 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 being vulnerable when people ask different questions. So I never had that issue or that concern, whatever questions that you wanted to ask me about being African American or being from the South or or questions about that. I was always receptive to that because um that communication to me is is very much a key point. Yeah, I think that's so important, Mark, uh, what you sh- what you shared, because I remember when um, in 2020, when the murder of George Floyd happened and I kind of went into prayer and then I heard these beautiful words of what you do in this moment will determine your destiny and dictate your future. And so I knew that it was time for me to move from that kind of anguish to action. And so then I start coming from a place of love. Mm-hmm. And so I opened myself up for questions for conversations and things like that. But there's a lot of people that really couldn't do that because they were still in the hurt process of it. So what do you think, what did it take to get you to that place of, I call it love, to be open enough to say, hey, I'm here. If you want to have a conversation, I'm open. Like, what was the work that it took for you to do that? Or did you just naturally do it because of how you were brought up? I, I think a piece of it was was uh, naturally having uh, that inclination as I grew up. And, and again, I think relating back to my my experience uh, with my family being in in involved in civil rights, to me there was no communication. So it was othering of other people, not understanding their histories or their backgrounds, or talking to people. So I said, how can I use my life to really make a difference? So that uh, if I can be willing to talk about myself, also be willing to learn. I think that uh, I'm always I always consider myself to be a student. And I'm always learning from others. I think that's so very, very important in the work that we do. Uh, so I, I think that it's part of my inclination. So I open the door and welcome, welcome everyone in to really have those conversations. And um, I, th- I think that is a key uh, to people learning about each other, um, understanding the rich histories, cultures, backgrounds that we all bring to the table. As I often say, when I, look around, um, when I look around the room, I say who's at the table, but also who's not at the table and who, who hasn't been represented. Yeah. Yes, that's wonderful. Yeah. Well, I'd like to ask this question and I would love to gain the wisdom that Mark has. So through your journey, I would love for you to share three keys or three wisdom keys for us um, that you learned as you navigated through your journey. Oh, wow. Three keys. So one, I think the journey is very important. Oftentimes we focus on the destination, but as I, as I get a little bit older here and then I look kind of the gray hairs and things that are happening, I say, you know what? Enjoy the journey. Enjoy getting up day to day and the interactions that you have, because I think those are so very important. So that journey, ha- have a goal in mind, have a destination, but be mindful of that, that, the journey piece. I think it's important. So that's number one. I would say number two, okay. uh, be responsible for your own happiness. I think that, you know, with yeah. that, I look to be positive each and every day, but I know that's, that's, uh, I, I have to take responsibility for that in just relating to people, working with others, being a positive difference in, in, in the, the work in, in communicating with others. And I think another key point learning from my family is to be resilient. You know, life is, 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 is yes. as, as I heard one time, every day is not going to be your birthday. So with that, <laughs> it is. You know, getting up, rolling up your sleeves, uh, saying, okay, what can I do to make a positive difference in my life? So I think resilience is very important. And as, as I get older, I think that, um, you know, we all have uh, different life challenges as we move through life. And that's just part of the journey. So yeah. um, right. uh, the journey is important, being responsible for my own happiness and also being very resilient. Yeah, that is wonderful. I love all three of those. So, um, Mark, I also started this podcast because I believe that there's moments that choose us, that call us into them. And so do you 
Um, what do you know? What moment called you into it? Or can you share a moment that called you into it that caused you to be like an activist or speak up or to disrupt something? Is there anything that you would like to share along those lines? Uh, I, I think that, you know, uh, with my work with ed- uh, equity, inclusion, and diversity, I made a key decision in my 30s. Again, I'd grown up in Alabama, had been there all my life, um, had an opportunity to um, join the Japanese Exchange and Teaching Program and do that in Japan. So I had an opportunity to travel there, to live there for three years, lived in the community at my junior high school. And as I say, I, I was the diversity in the community. Um, with that, um, I did not know the language. I, I had uh, spent my entire life in Alabama, had grown up. And many people asked me, well, why are you wanting to do this? And I want, I, and what st- stood out for me is I wanted to see the world. I wanted to have those experiences, have those, um, uh, learnings that, that would get me outside of the U.S. to have that international experience. And I think Japan certainly did that. Uh, it was a wonderful experience and a turning point in my life. Um, had many friends from different cultures and communities, was adopted by a Japanese family there that I still keep in contact with to this day. Uh, two of their daughters have come over and visited me. Um, they, what was also unique is while I was in Japan, I helped their daughter go to the University of Alabama. So they met my, my mom and my dad and my family. So I can remember my mom called me on the phone and she was just so proud. She was trying to understand why her son would go to another country and live in another country and then, uh, being away from her. And then, you know, when, when they visit and they met her and they're saying, Oh, well, we will, we'll, we will take care of Mark. And he's such a, such a positive force. And, and, you know, he's like our son. I could really feel the pride, you know, in my mom. So for me, I think those are those touch points that we have. So um, with that, how we can be positive in, in what we do and how we, if, if we're willing to step into environments where it may be a little bit different, it may be a little bit, uh, you know, what we have to get used to, but we're willing to do that and walk the walk and talk the talk. I think there's so much that we can give and learn. So uh, again, I think that was a key point. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, I had, I had, you know, had to really sort of think about it and just do I want, did I, did, you know, did I really want to do that? And I think a key decision for me is I didn't want to look, look in the future and at the end of the day, when I was, you know, much older and say, Hey, I had this unique opportunity. Did you take advantage of it? And I didn't want to look back and say, well, no, I wouldn't. So I said, you know, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to grow. I'm going to learn. That's, and I think that is what life is about, you know? So, so for me, I think that was a key point. And I'm glad that I did. Uh, that brought me you know, to the work that I do today that brought me to to California and an opportunity to be involved in EID and to really be able to 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 draw from my experiences. So with that, while I was in taught in Japan, I had an opportunity to go to India. I had an opportunity to go to Korea, uh, had an opportunity afterwards to just travel throughout uh, Europe for six weeks and to see all of those places that I had read about as a kid and looked at on TV, big blue marble and, and places like that. So I think that only ad- that adds to my richness and culture and what I can give to others. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, yes. Uh, 
I was, I was, I was, I was about 30 years old. I was 30 to 31 and I uh, had an opportunity to do that. So I did that from uh, 1997 to 2000. So, you know, 31, 32, wow, 33, 34. Awesome. So was in the program for about three years. So uh, mid thirties had an opportunity to travel. So, um, I, I would be glad to, you know, talk to your daughter and, and my, my my, yes, I know. I'm going to tell her to give yeah, you a jingle. My piece would be to go. I can remember. I can remember talking to my friend, and we were talking about what we we're going to do after the experience. And she says, "Well, are you willing to travel? Are you willing to go and do that?" And we looked at each other and we started laughing because we were in Japan. So, oh, I think opportunity <laughs> is so unique for her. She would have an opportunity to grow and to learn so much. And she can carry that back and share that with you. And when you hear her, her yeah. the, the, the wings to soar, as I call it, I think you'll be very proud. So um, whatever I can do to assist. Well, and I think you just hit like a key. Yeah, yeah you hit a key thing, though. I heard you say it within your, t- your message. And you said you did not want to get later on in your life and regret that you didn't take those opportunities and there's chances to go engage in a different culture or whatever mm-hmm. it is that we're working on. So I think that's a very powerful key for us to be different, to learn different things and to dream and to be able to fly and go beyond where our borders keep us. So thank you for sharing that. That's very inspiring. And so um, with that being said, I really appreciate you being mm-hmm. here, Mark. Um, I will let you have a last few words if you would like. Please give us one more wisdom nugget and then any way that people can get in touch with you in case they want to connect. Oh, uh, well, I I would say, you know, um, be thankful for each and every day. Uh, uh, Be be willing to share yourself, be willing to learn, be willing to grow, be willing to be an ally. Um, Resilience is the key. We often have to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Uh, We all have challenges that we have to overcome. but to, to be resilient in the work that we do, uh, it's such an opportunity to have to also talk with you today because you also you're very inspiring in the work that that you do. So that inspires me. So, um, you know, move forward, be positive. Thank you. And uh, be willing to share and learn and grow and look at each day as an opportunity when the sun comes up. Yes, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, if anybody want to get in touch with Mark, uh, Mark, I'll leave a link or something in your um, bio yes. if people want to reach out to you. If that's that okay. will be terrific. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you for being on the yeah. show. Thank you for having me, and it's an opportunity. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Take care.